Cloverfield is a found footage, first person perspective movie where all hell breaks loose as a monster from someplace just walks around looking for something. The military does more damage to the city than the monster. The question arises, where did it come from? It's a good question and at the end we thought we'd see something, but we only saw two people happy on the Ferris wheel and in the distance, out at sea, the monster falls from the sky, splashing into the water. So this tells us the monster fell from space or close to it, survived the heat from re-entry, that can melt steel, and hit in the water at over 2,000 miles per hour. We would hit the water at our average height around 178 miles per hour and it would feel like solid rock. So you can only imagine what it felt like to the monster which swam to shore by nightfall. Here's the thing, the military was on the creature not long after the first sign of destruction, Liberty's head rolling. Using the Cloverfield Paradox, it's an easy bridge to say that the world's governments knew the resources for power were soon to go and had already built and set it in orbit the particle accelerator named Shepard. During one of the tests, it opened a rift and that one monster came through. It was confined to the United States of America and US officials blocked all chatter from reaching out to other countries. Call it an information kill switch. The video ends with the bombing of Manhattan. It wasn't nuclear because the tape survived. If nuclear, no one would have been able to retrieve it for a few decades and by then the footage would have been too corrupted to view. So then we get 10 Cloverfield Lane where a woman finds herself underground with people who are surviving but they don't truly know what's going on. This takes place outside of Manhattan and a bit later. On the radio, power outages are covered up where the protagonist is T-boned by a truck off the road. She awakens underground where she must deal with bizarre discoveries while being fully protected by two people with their own agendas. No one knows what's happening on the surface and her injury hampers most of anything she needs to do. There are many mysteries and yet, once the surface is unveiled, we find that everyone was right but none were accurate. The link comes from Manhattan. After the bombing, the creature, which survived re-entry, missiles, gunfire, bombs, and people's screams, had released lots of what everyone called fleas. These fleas, what I'm making up, were offspring. The creature was merely trying to nest, but resistance from the natives of Earth made it difficult to find a peaceful spot. The offspring of the creature, now breathing more oxygenated air, grew into new forms and spread out to the closest landmass. 10 Cloverfield Lane sparks the spread of the monster's outbreak and the new threat. The creatures slowly fed off nearby energy. Their bodies have mutated to live off the electrical exhaust from communication towers, cars, and even worse, nuclear power generators. They don't go after these sources. They just stay within the vicinity of each power source. When the nest grows too large, they branch out and thus move west, while some take to the water and begin the long trek towards Iceland and Greenland. Each creature can produce the same amount of offspring as the original. 200 to 1,000, depending upon how much rest the parrot can muster during gestation. The offspring are easy to kill in the first two hours as they have not developed the skin of their parent. Each generation gains in protection what their parents did not have that allowed them to feel pain. Internal strikes are key in their destruction, but the creatures gain wisdom at an alarming rate. The end of 10 Cloverfield Lane shows the widespread epidemic is not slowing and it's time for anyone to fight, not just the military.